We're heading to my boy Alex Morton's house. Add some value to all of you guys. Let's go, first. baby. Towards your goals, towards your dreams. Have a burning desire, never give up, and make it happen. All right, I'm with my boy Alex Morton, a young millionaire and one of the millennial leaders that has a lot of influence, a lot of respect from a lot of young uh, entrepreneurs. And what's cool about connecting with you is you feel the same as me, where I really truly feel like the people that are gonna shift our culture are the young generation. 100%. Not the 60 and 70 year olds, nothing wrong with the big CEOs, but I feel like the, the change will come from the young entrepreneurs, what do you think? 100%, I mean, our generation, you know, growing up with you know, the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, all these different things, we think different, we act different, we go about business differently, and you know, it's us now, it's our earth, and it's, and it's our time to make change. 100%, and, and I wanna switch the interview around. For you, what's been on your mind? In, any like fresh perspectives, any, Breakthroughs, anything that's been uh, on your mind that you've kind of been talking about recently that you want to share that you yeah. feel could help? Yeah, I did a video this morning um, with one of our groups over in Europe, and I was talking about how you can't listen to the little guy. And when I say little guy, it, it's that little voice inside of all of our heads. You know, regardless of whether you're a speaker, coach, or trainer, you know, you're in network marketing, you're in real estate. You know, you always have those doubts and those limiting beliefs where it's like, just shut up. Yeah. Just like I can write this book, I can do this, I can accomplish whatever I want. So I would say, stop listening to the little guy and just go for it. So do you feel like shifting your circle of influence helps that? What are some tactics that, if someone's like, I keep listening to it, it's still there, I wanna do big things, but my doubt's kinda creeping in. What are the tactics? Is it write the goals down? Is it have a mentor? Is it talk to people playing the game at a higher level? Cause I always say too, if you wanna get rid of limitations, every single person you're around that you're associating with needs to have no limitations. 100%. If you have all these people that have limitations that have already given up on their dreams and you're trying to go for your dreams, it's incongruent and it's gonna to be tough to go through those the, the uh, tough times and actually pull through. So what would you say tactical is something that young entrepreneurs can do to get over that little guy that's telling them they can't do stuff? I would say, and this is hard for a lot of people, you know, it's like you gotta change who you're hanging with, like your social, not just your social influence, the people you go hang out with, or go to the gym with, or go to the bars with, but it's like, who do you talk to on a daily basis? You know, for me, it was tough to like cut ties and let go of College like people my too. homies, yeah. my bros, you know, some of the girls I used to kick it with. It's like these people aren't helping me get to that next level. That's why we connect, because we're like, we're on the same frequency. Yeah the same vibration, and if you're the richest person in the room, you're in the wrong room, and if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room, you have to elevate who you're around. Yep, was there a breakthrough you had where you actually saw the tangible results go up when you shifted your influence? Do you remember, let's say, I mean, you're still young, but when was the breakthrough year for you when you went, I don't know if you were ever stressed out or struggling or broke, but when was the breakthrough you went from the old Alex to like, dude, I'm a beast, it's ready, to, it's game time, like, yeah. I'm, I'm disassociating with these people because they hold me down and this is my new group and now it's time to go all in. Yeah, Do you remember I mean, that? When I, when I started entrepreneurship, you know, I started my own business in 2011. I failed and I failed and I failed and I failed and when I stopped failing and I started to win, it was because I was hanging out with top producers, you know, top earners, people that just knew a lot more than me. And I figured like, if I could hang out with five people who are making 100 a year, yeah. 100 grand a year, I'm gonna, something's gonna happen to me. You know, I'm gonna have a mindset, you know, shift, I'm gonna erase some of these limiting thoughts and beliefs to where it's gonna raise my belief level to the fact that I can go out there and do it. So, 100%, I mean, I was drinking six nights a week at Arizona State. I just saw you take a chuck. No, uh, water <laughs> shot. Um, He's like, no, don't get that, no, I'm yeah, just not kidding. Not anymore, but um, yeah, I was, I was hanging out with people who, who were continually not getting good results, and I started to hang out with people that were accomplishing the things I wanted. You know, at 21, I wanted a nice car, I wanted a nice walk, because I wanted a nice house. And I started to surround myself with people that had what I wanted. Remember, everyone, when you talk to 121 year olds, they all want that. 100%. And so now at 26, it's you about have it. impact. Yeah. And it's like, once you have the watch, I don't care if it's a 100 grand watch, eventually it's just gonna be a watch, it's just yep. gonna be a car. So it's more about impact and you know we talk a lot about legacy yep. and we're both young there's we're nothing more important i think and legacy yeah. is the um that that is the deal 100%. i think you have to 
it, it, it's challenging to tell someone something over and over. I strongly think you have to make money before you realize it's not about the money. 100%. To tell someone that's broke, it's not about the money. What do you mean? I can't pay my yeah, bills. I hate that. It's like, it is, you have to have the profit producing activities in place. I had a girl at the event ask me last night, because I was talking about, I've turned down $10,000 speeches and I've taken speeches for free or for, for a lower value because, or lower amount because I believe in that cause. And she goes, I'm doing all this volunteer. I'm like, she goes, but, but I, I, I'm not making money. I'm like, that's the thing. You have to have profit producing activities. You have to know how to make money and produce income before you can say yes to all these nonprofit things, all yeah. these voluntary. So people yeah. are following their passion without having results. Not gonna fly. Yeah, MMAs, money making activities, IPA, income producing. Yep. Activities first, and, not after. First, yeah. yeah. And I sat on stage um, in Vegas. I remember, I remember talking to I don't know ten thousand people, and I said, "Look, it's okay to want to be rich. It's okay to want nice things." People say, "Well, money is the root of all evil." First off, you don't know where to shop. Yeah. And number two, you're wrong. Yeah. Now, once you have some money, okay, yes, you should be giving back as much as possible. You should be putting out. You and I put out a ton of free content yep. all the time and free is, is free that means we're not making any money off of yep. that content and it's our time which is more valuable than anything but yeah you got to make money you got to pay the bills yeah. and it's totally fine but then you get to a certain spot a certain a moment where you say okay now it's impact time it's legacy time it's time to leave my mark on this earth yep and, and make your last name mean something and i think too it's about leverage when you don't need people and they, and you can do things based purely out of what you want, your passion, your values, that's when you, I think, have the leverage. Where you don't have to go speak to make money, you do it because you wanna do it and you love the company, you love the brand, the cause. I like that as well. It's my, my, one of my favorite quotes is from Zig Ziglar. He says, money's not everything, but it's right up there with oxygen. Yep. So he's saying it's not everything, but the people that say, don't be about money, don't go for money, I get that. But a lot of those people, A, they're not financially free, but B, they never really had a lot of money. Right. It's fun to fly, fly first class. It's fun to get nice hotels. It is fun to be able to go out to eat and get whatever you want. And it's fun not to worry about, shoot, can I afford this? So I get that. Has your money perspective changed from when you were 18 to 26? What's been the biggest shift in yeah, money wise? I don't spend five thousand dollars a night in uh, in a club to listen to some you know crappy rapper you know yeah. sing and hang out with people that don't even like me and they just want to use me for money. Yeah, yeah so it's definitely changed. Um, you know, I, I've had the hundred thousand dollar car. You know, I've got hundred thousand dollar you know watches and stuff like that. So now it's completely different. I mean, I'll go freaking shop at Walmart and yeah. stuff. Like I don't care. It's because you're. Can I think it's maybe because you know who you are now too. That's for me. It's like yeah. I don't need anything to impress others. I wanna make sure I'm fully content with who I am. And if I want something nice, the freedom to have it is the best thing. Yeah, I mean, there, there, was, there was a lot of, you know, many moments where it was, I needed that, I, I didn't need it, but I felt so, I needed yeah. that designer suit, or I needed $800 Tom Ford sneakers, because I, I had to impress this girl, I had to impress this, this company leader. Now it's like, look, this is who I am, yep. this is what I'm about. I'm over here in Adidas shorts, I've had the same Louis Vuitton shoes literally for four and a half years. We're just kicking it. And yep. that, those are the people that, I want to associate with if yep. some dude walks in and I've met people in our space who it is all about oh, the man. glitz and the glamour and the, and the BS and those types of people you know what I don't text them back anymore. it's an energy drain and it's like I want to spend time with quality people that give a damn mm -hmm. about helping other people legacy I yeah. love it what, what do you think about I've done whew, hundreds of hours of study on Millennials and, and talk to a lot of people and I've trained a lot as you have. There's a lot of uh, companies and news media and CEOs that say millennials lazy, entitled. There's some that say they're useless. That's that crazy. fires me up. We're millennials. That's, that's crazy. No, of course, yeah. but it, it sounds good to them. It's like, oh, millennials are the laziest generation. It's like, really? We've created almost every single social media platform that's all by millennials. What do you think in your head when, when you hear someone say millennials are useless? When you see millennials changing the game, making six figures, impacting millions, What's the, what's the mindset? Yeah, I mean, do you kind of ignore it or do you? It's crazy. It's like I've I personally coached 22 millennials who are lazy to go make six figures and retire their mom and have nice stuff and do whatever they want to go do in their life at a young age. I just think, I think it's nonsense. I think there's almost like a scare tactic yeah. in there where they're like, you know, what if they know more than us? What if they're better at technology? Yeah. What if they can come replace us in these job settings. I just think it's BS. Yeah. Um, are there lazy millennials? Of course. Yeah. But I think there was lazy in every generation. Are there lazy 55 year olds? I know a bunch of them sit on their ass and watch every game, watch every NASCAR race and they drink beer and their freaking their health sucks and everything sucks. There, there, it's like, you know, you can't justify, you can't generalize an entire generation from a couple people. 
Um, and I think it's our job to change that yep. perspective and to, and to win at high levels and show people like, look, we might be young, we might be, you, you know, you're old enough to be our dad or our grandfather, but you know what? We're here, we're smart, we're sharp, we're ready to rock and roll and you better watch out. We get technology, we understand impact and a lot of millennials would rather, they don't wanna work for mediocre companies. And if they see any incongruency from a leader, they're done. Yep. Which now, years ago, it's like, well, I don't like my boss, I don't like the leader, but I gotta do what I gotta do, I gotta settle, I gotta make the money to pay the bills. Millennials aren't like that. Millennials are about mission. Yeah. They, they wanna movement, be part movement. of They wanna yeah. be part of something, not just to get a check for two grand every two weeks and go home and do the same damn thing. No, they wanna be a part of like, like when we said, let's change the world, we actually believe that. Mm -hmm. A lot of other people, they've given up on their dreams, they've given up on all their goals, and they're just accepting life. And we're over here like, look, we can, wake up a generation, we can change the world, and we are. Because no one else will. That's my, I mean, I, a lot of people aren't doing it like we're doing it. Not that I'm saying we're better, it's just uh, every single day I'm trying to figure out how to add more value to people versus what can I do for myself, you know right. what I mean? Right. So let's get down to tactics. If there's a lot of millennials watching, which there will be, um, if a young millennial is a little confused, I don't have clarity, what are the apps, and I tell people, you have to develop skills that are relevant, that actually help you become valuable, because you're paid based off the value. And a lot of people these days are very replaceable. There's a lot of people that they could lose their job tomorrow. Or if someone quits on your team, you're like, man, for me too, it's like next person. Yeah. But then there's the people that are like, shit, I don't want to lose that person. They have value. They're, they're, they're influential. They're leaders. They have time management skills. They're actually even better at teaching it. What would you say the top two or three skills that millennials need to master are if they want to thrive in this new economy? If they want the impact, the houses, the freedom, the respect, what's the skills that are non-negotiable? Yeah, I got the non -negotiable. Same, same exact question yesterday on, on a podcast interview, and it sounds cliche, you and I have heard it a million times, but I think all achievement and making an impact, everything that we want, they want, everybody wants, it does start with a burning desire. And people say, well, I've heard that so many times. Well, look, if your results aren't what you want, you obviously don't understand yeah, it yet. Yeah. And I, I tend to get a little animated It's sometimes. good, I'm the same way. But it's like, you have to really want it, not like I really want to make, I, you have to like have a burning desire so strong that, you know, the universe- It doesn't let you sleep it in. It picks up on yeah. it. And it bends and it molds. Like there's a reason why we text each other and now we're sitting here. Yeah. Like there's reasons for everything and until you put that desire out into the universe, it's not gonna happen. So I would say a burning desire and you gotta set goals. Again, everyone's heard set goals. Do you write your goals down? Do you actually write down your mission for the day, not just your 10 year mission, but your mission for the day. Like I went to bed last night knowing exactly what I was doing today. Like you have, you, you have to know what you're gonna go do. You have to be effective. So I think before anything else, gotta have that burning desire. You gotta know what you want. You gotta write it down instead of planning go. So let's, let's talk about real value here, guys, because I, I agree with him as far as writing the goals down. And the most dangerous words I think on earth for people that are struggling are, I already know that. The question's not if you know that, it's are you doing that? Does your bank account prove you know that? Does your waistline prove you know that? Does your respect and influence prove you know that? And there's a lot of people with fake influence. Like, like I have influence and they, no one really follows them. They just think they have influence because they're not really valuable. So here's what I pre preach and we could talk about this. Real value is different than just taking action on something that's not really relevant. So here's an example. Listening to a podcast is not hard. If anyone can do it it's, it, it's not valuable. So even going to an event, you see a lot of people at events. Going to an event doesn't take much energy. You pay a fee, you get there, or you go free. Taking the action and executing the things that actually are relevant to your business that will get your results and doing that, that's the value. Going on a podcast, not valuable. Creating one might be more valuable. For you, so you can get on a great team, and if you're not taking any action, being a part of something is not the value, it's actually getting results. So I tell people, if it's easy to do, it's not valuable. Right. Like babies can talk. What age do people learn how to talk, honestly? Two? Young. One? Very, very young. Some late bloomers, three or four? So technically, anyone can talk. So if you're saying, I can do it, I can do it, so can a two-year-old. Mm. I used to tell my team, they always came in, there was always those macho people that came in, like, I'm gonna break the record. Do you ever get that? I'm oh, breaking the record. Yeah, I'm gonna time. be your best person. How many times do you get that, really? Daily. So, Daily. out of 100 people, the last 100 people that said they were gonna be your best person, how many became your best person? Probably one. 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 Why? Commitment and persistence. They take action. Every, like, it's like, it's like easy to do, it's easy not to, right? You know, the quote that everybody knows. 
Everyone knows what I, I can sales, what right? Yeah. You can make a phone call, you can make a list, you can learn an invite, you gotta go do the meetings. The reason why, you know, in my first ever company I was in, I did become the fastest youngest ever to make a million bucks because I worked when they were playing. Yeah. I worked when they were partying. I worked when they were I in the pool BSing. I was putting in the work. We're I really very similar. I was the exact school. same way. Arizona State University, it's like, uh, Alex is so much smarter than me. Actually, I'm not. Did you Peter's ever? not either. Did you ever go to events um, and you're talk, they're talking about stuff, you get notes, and after the event, they would go out. Did you ever go back to the hotel and kind of just write your goals and you were executing? Every Same with me. Because I knew I the run vision. Up, run upstairs with a journal and I would jot down, I would try to figure out. I just went to a mastermind in Ohio. I went upstairs, um, everybody went out to dinner and was drinking and stuff at the bars. I went upstairs Love and it. I wrote down every single thing I could freaking remember and put an action plan together. It's like the little things. Like everyone wants. The big thing, the big house, the big car, the big following, whatever the hell you want, right? It's the little things. Consistent daily. little daily actions. That's the tactic. You want tactical? Consistency every day. Yep, that's huge. Not letting all the shiny objects affect you, staying focused on yep. the vision and letting your vision guide you, not the circumstances and all the shit that comes up. So let's go back to the talking. So he said the same thing that I believe. A lot of people used to tell me on my sales team, I'm gonna blank. And a lot of times I found out with deep dive research that they were kind of making up for their lack of results. So the reality is if you're a millennial, let the results do the talking. And there's just so much talking going on and I can't, I can't stand the people to talk too much without actually executing on things. And you've probably dealt with so many people the last couple of years that are talkers. So is there anything you tell them? Like right when they say, hey Alex, I'm gonna break the record. Do you say, stop talking? I do have something I tell them. I say, look, I respect it. You remind me a lot of me, but guess what? Go out and prove it to me. Because yeah. I remember when I was that 21 year old going up to one of my mentors who had a Lamborghini and I said, I'm gonna do what you did except faster. <laughs> and he's like, and I remember he said, look, bro, show me. Yeah. And that's it, it's not being a, it's not, you're not being a dickhead, you're not being a, a, you know, an asshole to somebody. You're saying, look man, I believe you can do this, Peter, yeah. but you gotta go show me. Yeah. So go prove it with your actions. I say, don't wash people's mouth, <laughs> wash their feet, man. Yep. It's what they do on a daily basis. I love execute. it. So with you building a team, a lot of people want to build teams, but I don't feel like they're becoming the type of person that will attract good people. They're like, I want to build a team, but they're still not congruent. They're still saying show up early, they're late. They're still saying do this, but they're doing that. How do you really build a team from scratch? How do you go from no one really knowing who you are to dominating? Is it taking the fundamentals that the person above you teaches you and doing it the best you can? Is it doing your own thing? Is it figuring out who you are and being authentic? What are some steps to build a team? If someone's young that wants to build a team, what do you tell them? Yeah, I would go find somebody, whether, you know, real estate, direct sales, door to door, network marketing, insurance. There's somebody in your ecosystem that is accomplishing what you want to accomplish, that's kicking butt, that's rocking and rolling, right? Go reverse engineer whatever they did and then find ways to go faster. But like you said, you have to become, you have to become the leader you wish to follow. Yeah. You know, a lot of people that's want to go the, recruit that's the a 10, incongruency. and there are two, mm -hmm. right? You have to be a 10 to go recruit a 10, or at least be close, because if someone's, you know, blah, blah, they, you can tell yep. pretty quick. They want to track the right they're people. they're full of it, or they're, or they're the real deal. So become the leader you wish to follow. You have to work on yourself. Like, I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on training, on mentoring. I hired a coach 90 days ago, $25,000 check. Yeah. People, see, people don't see that kind of stuff. Man, Alex is young, he's crushing it. How many young people would spend 25K to invest in themselves? I spent, you know, I mean, lots of money on seminars and yeah. masterminds. Yeah. People don't see that kind of stuff. They hear us talk about it, but they don't really understand that you're taking money out of your bank account and giving it to someone else so you can elevate your game. To go even higher. Yeah. Everyone had, you know, Grover, I forget his first name, Grover coached Tim Michael Grover. Jordan. Yeah. There you go. So Michael Jordan had a coach. Should we have coaches? Yeah. yeah. Should you have a coach? Probably. You need yep. somebody to guide you, and I call it brainstorming brilliance, right? When you have a coach, you can brainstorm brilliance. You can say, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And as long as they have the, they have the results, they have the integrity behind it, they're gonna guide <clears throat> you to success a heck of a lot quicker than you sitting there in college banging your head yeah. on a desk, saying, how do I do this? How do I do that? Go find somebody that has what you want, and listen, you gotta listen. Every great leader was first a great follower and even the best leaders they still follow mm -hmm. i follow i still follow like gary vaynerchuk i follow that guy for many reasons so there's people that you look up to people that i look up to not idolize but look up to 
So everyone should be modeling mm -hmm. and mirroring and extracting. That's how you grow. That's how you get to where you want to go. 100%. And what I tell people too, that it's my something I've realized the last year or two, following people that you're congruent with, that you know are transparent is a huge key. I think a lot of people these days follow anybody. Mm -hmm. It's like they succeeded. Yeah, but what if, I, I want to follow people that are world-class people overall. They're world-class dads and husbands and sons. So a lot, and I want to emulate their lifestyle in a way. You know what I mean? So a lot of millennials will follow anybody that's successful. Um, do you believe that's okay, or do you feel like it's it's better to follow people that are fully congruent with you, like based on your values? You got to be selective. And, yeah. and at first, at 21, yeah, if follow there anybody. Car, if there was the watch, if there was the girls. I was like, okay, yeah, okay, I'll listen. But now it's totally different. You know, 26. I'm not married. But it's like I want to follow people who are good people. Mm -hmm. Like if some guy has ten million in the bank but he cheated on his wife, yeah. probably not a good person yeah. to look at, right? You want it, like you said, congruency. Yeah. I think it's huge. I think you should write down what qualities you you know want most, what qualities you respect the most. And there's people out there doing it. I mean, we can name people right now that it's like, look, family life, check. Business, check. Good person, check. Okay. Yep. Good guy. That's huge. And I, I think that's something that people overlook. Another thing that people overlook is, we'll talk about it too, is health and energy. I think you're pretty big on health and being vibrant and stuff. It's not talked about enough. But as far as, let, let's dive into, we talked about mentorship, circle of influence, tactics, goals, um, social media, branding, marketing. Mm. Uh, for you, what do you feel like being around, let's, let's both vibe on this, being around hundreds of thousands of millennials the last couple of years, what do you see as like the most relevant communication channels right now and, and things that people need to get involved in if they want to reach millennials? I love video. Um, I know Gary loves video. He talks about it's the most consumed content. I just love it. So like I'm turning on my phone all the time and talking like this morning at 8 a.m. and hair was all messed up, talking to our group, <laughs> group, right? You know, I got a full-time creative director. You know, Dar crushes it. You got two of your guys here. Video is awesome. Yeah. So I think that anybody... And people, it's funny, it's not, it's not funny, but people say, well, you know, I don't know what to say. I'm kind of scared to turn on my, it is okay, funny. it is funny. My phone, I'm like, I had a, a young lady message me, really nice, really nice girl. She said, Alex, I'm just so freaking scared. I said, look, I want you to film a video tonight for two minutes. Perfect. And just, just speak your heart. And she did it and she wrote me back. She's like, oh my God, I feel so good. I've done the same thing, tell and people, just film it. don't focus on the shares and the comments and the likes. Like yeah. I can go back, you, you, you can go back on my public Facebook and look at statuses in 2011, six likes. Yeah. So it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. You don't just blow overnight. Comment on overnight success. Well, I don't, there's no such thing, but it, 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 it's an easy cop out for people to say it. Mm. Oh, that's over. I didn't know about him. It's overnight success. No, there's no overnight success. It, it's years and years of sacrifice when no one's watching. Right. I say the grind only really respects the people that hustle when no one's watching. Yep. So overnight success is usually, these, what's cool about these days, Alex, is it used to be 10, 20 years with social media, with mentors, with the right ambition, with the right information, Overnight success now is shortened to yeah. four, five, six years, maybe two or three years with the right hustle. So it's cool that it's changed. It doesn't take 20 years anymore. Right. It takes three or four. Yeah, because we're so connected. So that, but that, that's what, my, what I think no over, overnight no. success. Athletes, years. musicians, uh, it doesn't, no, it, you got to put it. You might there. randomly see them like, oh my gosh, they're on the news. They're everywhere. They're on the TV. They're on the iTunes. But no, they've been hustling for 10 years. Yeah. yeah. 100%. So I just think building a brand, I think Video's Facebook is huge. Team, yeah. um, I need to be doing more Snapchat to be real. I, I'm not as consistent as I should be, and I admit that. I need to be more consistent on Snapchat. Um, but just, just being real, I just think there's a lot of... So let's label them. So first you think is video number one, hands down. I think video I agree. One. People relate to that. Two, so on top of video, Facebook and Facebook Live and posting and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And I, what would, I really hammer Facebook. And I then, feel like there's a lot of people on Facebook. Yeah. And I mean, that's the one that was kind of almost the original. Yeah. Number three, do you think Instagram or Snap for you? <clears throat> Snapchat's real. Yeah. It is real. I love it. It's my new favorite. I mean, yeah, the last, it, last six months through a year, I love it. Yeah. It's, it's not easy to build. You have to promote from different avenues and stuff, and it's hard to get up to the couple thousand plus views, but I love Snap because it, it is real. It's authentic, it it's and real. people see real time what you're doing. Yeah. Like we could snap right now yeah. and they're like, oh, they're doing that right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. We, I mean, I throw up images. I, yeah. I just kind of. It's not as engaging. I'm on a plane and I, I speak my heart on it. It's not as engaging. I, I think those people were on the Facebook and they're on the Snapchat and Twitter. I really don't mess with it anymore, yeah. to be honest. And I don't. It's that dying. may hurt some people. And Periscope too. Yeah. That you say bye bye. Out. That kind of died out on me. But, yep. Uh, Facebook, Snap, Instagram. And I just think the biggest secret on all of 
the whole branding deal genuine, authentic, and don't BS. Transparent. You know, transparent. And you know, my career, I, I've definitely pissed off some people. I've definitely made a lot of people happy. But one thing is, I've never gotten on there and just said a blatant lie or just BS the audience or BS people. That's just the way it is. So let's let's talk real quick because it's a subject that must be understood. If anyone that wants to get to a level of influence that's actually worth something that's valuable, you're gonna get some haters. We both have haters. Um, oh, yeah. It's just long list. And Grant even told me years ago. He's like, if you don't have haters, you're never going to reach admiration and you're not really doing anything. He's, he told me, get half the country to hate you, and you're the president. I love it. That's there huge. And I mean, half the people like LeBron's playing tonight, I think. No, Steph Curry's playing Steph tonight. Curry, yeah. he, he has a little more love because he's a lovey guy, but he has a lot of haters. Totally. But he has a lot of people that love him. So wh what's been your transition to really not take things personal? What is the bulletproof confidence that comes with being someone yeah. that's influential. Yeah. I know it's it, this isn't an easy subject, but I think if me and you get outside ourselves, forget us, and try to give value based on our experience, I think that's what people want to hear. Yeah, I mean, I can I can talk about you know something as small as a little Instagram comment talking talking shit, or as big as in 2014, the Rolling Stone magazine um, sent an editor in Arizona for two days with me. I thought it was going to make maybe a 50/50 piece, maybe they were they were interested in my sales ability, right? That article comes out 100%, it's framed in our Vegas house, 100% smear article, hate campaign, call me Bernie Madoff, the whole nine yards. And at that moment, I remember a lot of people would have been crushed. Yeah. I mean, Rolling Stone's a big deal, right? Getting smashed in that. A lot of people would be crushed, the morale would be down, oh my God, career's over, blah, blah, blah. I framed it, we drank champagne that night. I said, you know what? It's Rolling Stone. Made it in the Rolling Stone. Yeah. Even though they're talking crap, it's That's okay. That's pretty badass. So, People are gonna hate. You know what? What did Drake say? You know, having anger towards everyone reaching success. Yeah. Haters. It comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. So if you're watching this and you're worried about, you know, the, your little social bubble of your hometown, or your small high school, or even maybe college and all these different things, get over. You got. You have to get over it. Mm -hmm. And it's better to understand now to develop that bulletproof rhino yeah. skin to where, not gonna. It, it, great. Thank you. Thank you for the promotion. Yeah. Move. Because if you know who you are, like you said, if you know who you are, doesn't affect that's you. it. Nothing matters. Lewis was saying, <laughs> he was saying he, he used to take it super personal, just being real. And he said he used to want to respond like, what the, I'm, I'm, all, I'm positive. Yeah. And his mentor said, just respond with this or don't respond. Thank right. you for the feedback. And I'm like, that's actually a good point. Yeah, can you get a snap yeah, too? Some snap. That's actually a good point. He goes, thank yeah. you for the feedback. And if you want to get even deeper, here. If you want to get even deeper in it, Alex, I've, I've done, for the mixtape I released on the haters track, there's a lot of articles about trolls that their whole job was hating. They hated everyone. It doesn't matter what the thing was. Like You could see the best, most inspiring, sickest, coolest video on YouTube. There'll never be a zero dislikes, always dislikes. And a lot of them got turned to positive people. And they asked them, why did you hate? And almost always, it was they were having something going on. Always. They were lonely. They didn't feel accepted. Yep. They wanted attention. They were jealous. And it was a reflection of their own insecurities. So going even deeper than having bulletproof skin, I think people need to understand that when someone hates on you, it is a 100% reflection of who they are. Yeah. Not you. 100%. Yeah. It's always the inner game. And you don't even have hate. What did Prince Yee say? You don't even have room for hate if you're going to be successful. And I say, I've never, I'll, tell me, maybe I'm wrong. I've never met a successful hater. Someone that hates no. a lot, then they're, I've never met no, one. They don't exist. If there's one out there, show me. That'd be you're cool. spending time hating and hating and talking smack, then you're not focusing on what you need to be doing to get to that next level anyway. And, you know, our outside, the outer is always a reflection of the inner. Yeah. You know, Bob Proctor's talked about that for, what, 80 some mm -hmm. years. And he says, whatever this is, is a reflection of the inner game. So if someone's hating inside, it's black and it's lonely and it's empty and all they can do is fire at somebody else. Yep. Let me so, ask you this, have you hated when you were younger? Probably, yeah. like in high school, <laughs> hating on some rapper. Like, oh, I even say, yeah, it's so, and it's like it's easy, there's easy targets. Like a lot of people that have no success, I hate Justin Bieber, I hate right. Drake. It's they like, dude, like come, come on, dude. Hey, I mean, imagine having the pressure he had at 19 and worth 200 million and you're gonna hate on him in your basement. It's just funny play, to see society. Yeah, it's just funny to see society. And not yes. that like I idolize him, but you got to respect people's yeah, results. I, I respect greatness. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people. I'm from Ohio, so you know LeBron's oh, a big yeah. deal. But it's like people 
I mean, I've, Still hate I've, him. I've seen LeBron play away games, and it's like, it's a roaring mm-hmm. boo. Like a roaring hatred yeah. sound. At the, it came out this morning, he's one of like 10 to be in six NBA finals in a row. Yeah, he was it's just like, saying dude, that. dude, just like, shut up. By man. himself a lot will of times. Will he win it? I don't know. I think he will. Yeah. I think he'll get it done this year. Will he? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. But it, it's, it's, it's so much harder to appreciate and to accept than it is to hate. So what's society going to take most of the time? Easy route. For sure. And it's like, I, I w- if, if society, I swear, if society would hustle as hard as they hated, I think they'd be in a whole new situation. We'd be in a lot better spot Not joking. America. Yeah. So it's huge. So I want to I want to kind of finish with this Alex. You're speaking to a thousand millennials, like young millennials. We have a track called the Elite Millennial Perspectives. Maybe it's what you'd tell yourself when you were 18, maybe it's a message you'd want as a legacy and you can vibe for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, what's like the message that you want to leave for millennials to where they can take it and they can, it's something that they, they don't forget. Like, wow, that message that Alex told me, that resonates with me. Yeah. What is that message or what's the, the powerful message you want to give them that you think could yeah. add value? Sounds cliche, sounds corny, whatever you want to call it. it it's, it's, you can do it. And, and like, I had to really program that up here. So if I was speaking to thousand, 10,000 people, I would say, look, regardless of your dream, regardless of where you currently are, where you currently are, it doesn't even matter where you're headed. That's what's important. You can accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. You have to understand it's going to take time. It's going to take effort. It's going to take consistent. It's going to take massive action. You're going to have to let go of some of these influences, some of these friends. But if you focus consistently and you're persistent, no matter what happens, you can and you will get to where you want to go. I always say, you know, God's we're all God's highest form of creation, capable of anything and everything. And if you can do it, he can do it. If I can do it, he can do it. She can do it, he can do it. It's like, you can make that thing happen. Whatever you want, you can make it happen, but you have to be willing to fight. You have to be willing to go through the test to get that testimony. You just can never, ever, ever give up. And no, every successful person at one point had doubts, had limited beliefs, questioned what they were doing, but they said, you know what? I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep working, and I'm gonna get there. So just know it's possible, know you can do it. I love it, huge, appreciate it man. Hey, much respect. And I'll tell you, how, the best influence someone can have on their platform is using it wisely by impacting people and you're doing just that man. So much respect, appreciate it. Appreciate it man. We'll talk soon. All right.